everyone, this is Yossi Videsta, 52 Frames. Welcome to another Coffee and Critique. In honor of our most recent patrons, thank you so much for supporting the project. But before we get into it, I wanted to remind you that we still have spots left for our very first photo tour in Iceland happening in October 2018. It is absolutely incredible the itinerary that myself and the guide have put together. You can go to 52frames.com slash trip to see all of the details, but it is just absolutely incredible. I am really excited to go. We already have about half of the available spots taken. So if you are on the fence or curious about coming or coming with a friend, now is the time to check this out and sign up. Itai Monikandam is our guide along with yours truly. And we have curated an amazing customized trip just for this community. We're giving you all meals, which is not usually the case for these trips because I personally don't like having to deal with paying for things after you pay for a trip. We're gonna have super jeeps. We're gonna have a super small group. We're gonna go to some hidden local treasures and places that we're gonna see in Iceland uh, is just ridiculous. Uh, the uh, Seljula's Landsfoss uh, <laughs> waterfall and the Svinnefoss. Uh, I don't think there's uh, people from Iceland watching this. I don't think anybody will get insulted. You know, Iceland, there's a population of only 300,000 people in the whole country. Um, there's beaches made of black sand. There's super jeeps. There's ice caves. There's glaciers. There's tons of waterfalls. Amazing, amazing photography opportunities and we're gonna go over everything uh for all skill levels and yeesh even if you came with a uh a cheap point and shoot camera you'll still have the trip of a lifetime again go to 52frames.com slash trip in order to sign up okay so for this week's coffee and critique i wanted to do something a little bit different inspired by someone i'm sorry i forget who that posted in the group asking if i can give a coffee and critique about how to critique and this is something i've wanted to do for a while and i really hope that this helps especially uh within the scope of this project but in general i think this is good practice for life um i think you know, first and foremost, as the critiquer, don't feel like you need to do anything. Um, and I'll go through some of your examples. I'm actually going to go into last week's Facebook album, which was Week 19 Negative Space, and go through the critiques and critique the critiquers, which is a bit meta. Um, but, you know, for example, beautiful. I love the soft colors and the berries look delicious. I don't think that is an empty uh, comment. Uh, I know some people have issues with the well done. Suzanne Stout here wrote well done. I don't think Suzanne did an injustice by saying well done. I think that's nice. I think that's better than not saying well done. I do think there is an issue, especially within uh, a population like our community where we're thirsty to, to grow and to learn and to educate ourselves, where you have you know, the likes and the loves and the wow and the <laughs> great job. And perhaps it doesn't help to further your photography education and learning. But I I think if people write well done, again, I don't think that's a bad thing. Okay, perhaps it's not a critique, but perhaps it is. I mean, perhaps, you know, it's uh, it's a very short, positive critique. And I, for one, I don't mind it. I think if everyone wrote well done, then yeah. I don't think everyone should write well done. I think the, uh, the default should be um, a more in-depth critique. Uh, but back to my original thought process here. You don't need to know what overexposure is, what uh, white balance is, what uh, a crop means. You don't need to know anything, really, to give a critique. So that's, that's I think, a, uh, the first baseline that I would want to give over is, oh, and I just had an example here, beautiful, I love the soft colors, okay? Um, or even nice, let's see, has a simple rustic feel to it. That's a good critique. I mean, that is something that I think Wendy, as the photographer, took care 
to give over in the story of her subject that this is rustic by having this wooden grain in the background. It does give this feeling. And uh, basically what uh, Tamar here is saying is, yes, you nailed it. Or uh, maybe this wasn't your intention. This is the story that I see. So there is uh, value in a critique that may not be technical, okay? So that's that's what I wanna say off the bat. I love that his hand is on his head, right? So Lee may think that they're not giving a, a particularly technical uh, critique, but you know what? You just gave a critique on uh, posing, right? This is a pose, you're saying you pose your uh, subjects well. So I think, Underlying any uh, even somewhat uh, superficial or soft uh, critique or comment, I think there is some technical value to be found underneath. So that's a long way of saying, like, don't be shy. You know what I mean? Go out and uh, drop a comment. Say what you feel. Say uh, how does the, the, the photo feel to you? What kind of story do you think it's saying? What do you think about the colors? You could just say, I like the colors. And I think that has value. Um, obviously, going more in depth, if you do know you have the knowledge of specific uh, photography techniques that you can share in your comments, then for sure you should do so, okay? Um, the second like overall thing that I'd like to put out there is as the critique, okay, as the photographer who is being critiqued, this is a bit difficult, okay, because we're all creatives, including myself. This is something I struggled with when I first started uh, working in video production. And I would show uh, a video draft to the client and they would say, okay, uh, let's change this and let's you know tweak that. And I don't really like this part. And I was just mortified. <laughs> like, what? This is my, I just, this is my baby. I just worked for hours on this, on this perfection, on this Mona Lisa masterpiece. Uh, and it took some time for me to get over the fact that, man, the, nothing is perfect. And also, nobody is perfect. So even the critiquer uh, is not technically saying anything more important than your own opinion or someone else's opinion. So it's good to take on critique from someone else as is. And what I mean by that is... You don't need to apply or attach any kind of weight or story that this person has on your photo. I think a nice response in general on like, a, you know, a mental psychological level is to say noted, noted. I love the look on the boy's face. I would like it a little bit less overexposed. Noted, MJ. You know what I mean? Like, I think that attitude goes a long way because you're. it's good to accept and it's good to hear. It's good to listen to what people are saying and then you can choose to take that on however much you want to take on. I know for myself, when I get critiqued, even if I totally disagree, I'll, I'll like think about it. Oh, that's, that's interesting that this person has that perspective. You know, maybe other people have that perspective also, even though I don't, I don't necessarily agree with it. That is interesting feedback. You know, that's something I can keep in mind. So don't, uh, you know, you shouldn't have tears over being critiqued. And I think that's a big part of huh, art in general, self-development in general, uh, going through life in general. It's, it, I know is a, a particularly hard challenge for me, especially as a sensitive creative myself. Um, but it has really helped, uh, in my life to just take on what people tell me, uh, again, way beyond photography. And that would be the second most important thing that I just want to give over. So number one, don't be shy, go out and, and leave a comment. Okay. Because your, uh, your critique has value. And number two, take on the critiques as much as you'd like. And don't feel that what everyone says is like daggers to the heart. And don't feel that what everyone says is nonsense and you don't believe anything, you know? Just like note it, take it in, and um, and you can look at it from a different perspective because that's really what we're trying to do here. Okay, I, that was a bit of a ramble, but I think those two items, like if anything else, if that's all you get, that's, I think, something to dive into the next album with that mindset because it'll really change everything and, you know, feel free to 
try and experiment doing that in life also you may get some <laughs> interesting results so more on a detail level now let's go on to how to critique okay now that we've gotten past the the mindset if you will so i prefer uh, and this is the advice i always give out is to use what's called the sandwich method again this can be implied uh, this can be applied well beyond photography uh in life in general um spouses partnerships friends uh anywhere especially when giving critique it's good to sandwich so what does that mean you want to start with something positive hey i like the uh i like the ambition here i like the colors i like the i like the great subject great you know whatever um and then you uh the meat okay in the middle of the sandwich is the critique even though the sandwich probably the meat's, the meat's probably the good part in the sandwich and the bread is kind of the filler. But okay, in this example, just bear with me. <laughs> the meat here is the critique, okay? You give a critique. I think it's a little bit overexposed. I think it's a little bit yellow, whatever your critique is. And you can end off again with a compliment. Overall, uh, great photo. Overall, um, I love how, uh, you know, you don't have any distraction, really great job. And it's deliverable in a really nice sandwiched package that the photographer can more easily accept. So let me just go through some actual uh, comments here. Uh, warm glow, great. So like, okay, so for me, for example, well, first of all, Tamar wrote, uh, CC is welcome especially your opinion on the overexposed element. Do you think it works? That's nice, right? Tomorrow's really inviting some very directed feedback. So already that makes our job easier because this photographer is open, is wide open, um, even though she has here critique level regular, which by the way, I also only always choose regular, but there are people that like shred away and maybe I'll get to that in another uh, screencast because I think that's a different different type of mindset. But um, I think the shred away should be the same. I think uh, I think the shred away, I think if I saw, I said I'm not going to get into it, but I guess I will. If I saw shred away here, I would absolutely do the sandwich method and make sure that there's critiques in there. And if I saw regular, then I think somebody like Suzanne just saying, well done, this and that, like, I think it's all good. It's a bit more, uh, a bit more open for just general feedback. Shred away, I want to know what's wrong. Like, give it to me. You know what I mean? It doesn't mean when you see shred away that you could say uh, overexposed, <laughs> period. <laughs> you know, like oh, you said shred away. No, no, no. Shred away doesn't mean you have to yell at the person <laughs> or use less words or only be negative or critical. I think shred away could still be the sandwich, but you want to make sure you have a uh, valuable critique in there. Okay, so Tamar, uh, regardless of this, uh, really leaves it wide open, asking specifically about the overexposed elements. For me personally, I see this photo and I think this is too overexposed. Um, but surprisingly, reading through the comments, um, most of you, at least those that commented here, did not think that it was too overexposed. Which, again, right, like the whole noted concept, even though, oh, I am the I am the founder of 52 Frames. I know I must know better. Like, that's irrelevant. OK, so I am looking at everyone else's responses here. And I, I did take pause and I said, huh, seems that people weren't as bothered by the overexposure as I was. Maybe it's maybe there is more room for overexposure in this creative environment right we're not in photography school right so I, again all all feedback is good um britta does it perfectly i really like your composition and the orange tea of the boy gives such a great contrast regarding the overexposed elements i'm not a fan of those and i would have tried to reduce those in post-processing so this is brilliant, okay? I know she didn't she didn't have her uh, the third piece of bread in the sandwich, but okay, that's fine. Um, one thing I want to point out, uh, okay, first of all, I really like your composition, okay? Uh, she likes the orange tea. She gave two two pieces of bread there, actually, <laughs> two two shout outs of things that she liked. Then she mentions regarding the overexposed elements, I am not a fan of those, 
Okay, I want to focus on those words. This is also really helpful, I think. <laughs> Ironically, how I just phrased that sentence. To uh, package your critique in a, a bit more of a personal form. Because at the end of the day, these are only as far as our own thoughts and opinions, and I don't care who you are. I don't care if you've won the Pulitzer and you're commenting, it's still your own freaking opinion. Because there is there is no right or wrong in art. There definitely is no right or wrong in art, in photography, in 52 frames, because this is more of our own uh, personal exercises that we're taking on, our own personal challenges that we're taking on every week. And this is a perk, I think, that we're sharing with the community and that we're talking about it. But you can't do a, chal a personal challenge wrong. I mean, you can't take on your own personal challenge and then, oh, no, you did it wrong. Like, no, that's, this is, but this is my own personal challenge. So the same with uh, critiquing. I think it is better uh, received, executed, encapsulated, packaged, delivered with uh, a, a more opinionated, personal flavor. I am not a fan of overexposed uh, photos in general. This makes it a lot easier for Tamar to, uh, to, to accept it. Okay, Britta is not a fan. Noted. <laughs> right? I mean, even if Britta did say uh, it's too overexposed, okay, you could still say noted. But that's a bit, it's a bit uh, factual, a bit harsh, a bit binary, a bit, you know, uh, one way or another. Because I don't think that really exists. And I think it's only helpful to say if I were doing the photo or in my opinion or I, my thoughts are. Okay, we don't have to get so hung up on the language. But I think it is helpful as it is coming from you and your brain and your opinion to state it that way. Um, MJ says, I love the look on the boy's face. Okay, uh, positive critique. Uh, I would like it a little less overexposed. Again, I would like it. That's, that's a great critique. Um, Cheryl says, I tend to go darker with my exposure, but I think for this particular shot, this works. I like the shot. I think that's very helpful. Oh, also, back to Britta. She doesn't just critique, and I think this is also super important. Again, for those that can, okay, for those that can offer uh, constructive critique, meaning how could you do it better, not just what's wrong with it, then that really helps to do so. So uh, I'm not a fan of those. I would have tried to reduce the overexposure in post-processing. So that gives you a clue as to how one could correct something like this uh, to adjust it in, uh, in post. Okay. Um, I think we can move on from here. Annette says, I like this a lot. I like the overexposure. I think it's appropriate. <laughs> Also helpful in the sense that ordinarily it may not be appropriate. Here it is appropriate. Uh, and then I just wanted to mention here, uh, it here, Samantha says, it bothers me that I can't see, I don't mind the overexposure of the wheat against his orange shirt. It does bother me that I can't see the other arm of his glasses though. And then a little thought emoji. Uh, I think this is really great. It goes back to whatever you can critique. So what Samantha was saying is that it bothers her that sh you can't see the, um, the glasses, the side of the glasses here. What I interpret from that is that she's saying on a more crit on a more uh, technical level, the side of the boy's face is overexposed. So she doesn't mind the wheat being overexposed, but once you have skin overexposure, you're perhaps losing some important elements of your subject and of the photo. Again, maybe I'm making my own attachments, but I think that is a good extrapolation of, uh, of Samantha's intent on a more technical level. Let's move on. I'm going to go through a couple more. I thought this would actually be a faster uh, coffee and critique, but you know what? This is good that I'm going uh, in depth here. Uh, so Wendy Dunn, I look at this photo uh, personally, meaning Yosef asked personally, and I don't really have a critique on this. Uh, I think it's a great shot. I think, I think you nailed it. Like, just, you know, looking at it quickly. Um, so let's see what people have to say. So simple, lovely, simple, rustic feel. Okay, very nice arrangement. 
and composition. I, these photos may have been next to each other. I'm seeing the same uh, people commenting. Um, beautiful. I love the soft colors, great contrast, coordination of colors. Here, it makes me think of summer picnics and camping. Like That's a very valuable uh, feedback, very, very valuable comment because it's story, right? You're commenting on the story. What is this photo evoking? That's really good for the photographer to uh, to see if they nailed it or to see if, you know, maybe it brings out a entirely different uh, intent. And that's cool, too. Like, huh, I didn't even think I uh, I meant to give that story in some cases, you know. Uh, your depth of field is perfect. Love the reflection of the window frame in the berries. See, that's something I wouldn't have even noticed. He's noticing the reflection of the berries. Beautiful textures, depth of field, composition, nicely done, simple but great. And then all the way at the bottom here we have um, contrast is great, as are the other. I feel the bowl is kind of close to the bottom edge of the frame and the arrangement of the spilled berries doesn't look natural. So finally we have a critique all the way at the bottom, which is fine. And it doesn't mean that Anne's critique means the photo is now not perfect. Um, I actually read this uh, comment from Anne and I was like, huh, noted. Maybe it is, maybe the, the, the bowl is kind of close to the bottom edge of the frame. Maybe the spilled berries do look a little bit posed. Like that's, yeah, that's good feedback, you know, maybe. A again, that's a along the lines of noted. It's like, yeah, maybe, you know, maybe right, something to keep in mind. Uh, I think these are all examples of good critiques. Here is an example of a photo that I personally um, think has a clearer critique at least for me personally, and that's the, the cutout, right? The, the background is uh, looks like a gray that was applied in Photoshop. And the subject, once you look closer, I can't really zoom in here while on Facebook, but if you look at the, uh, the edge, the border, the outline of the plate and of this little girl, you can see that it was cut out, the subject was cut out. So that would be my critique. Obviously, adorable pick, right? We wanna have the... Uh, the bread aspect here, and we have a lot to say about the, what is this called? Cake smash? Cake smash uh, photography? Um, and that's mostly what people wrote. I would have liked for people to have gone more into the flaws of the cutout because I guess on a, a photography level, this, this person, uh, Sarah, did go uh, with a more ambitious edit, a more aggressive edit. So I think I would think that she could receive a more aggressive critique on the edit. Um, I think only one or two people had just one, okay? We just have Kate Wheatley-Smith mention um, about the, uh, she said the cropping needs more work. I think she meant the uh, compositing. And uh, Kate uses GIMP and gave very, very specific feedback on how she processes uh, composites and cuts out her subjects. Um, and again, introducing a gradient. That was, that was the other thing that I would have uh, said. If, if this wasn't just pure gray and if it went from white to gray or gray to black, then it would look a bit more natural. Um, or you could say it would have been nice if this was a natural setting and you didn't need to cut out your photo. Um, which brings me to this photo. The tab is suspended. This um, this is not sponsored by uh, Tab Suspender, but I highly recommend anyone on Google Chrome get yourself Tab Suspender. It'll it'll save your memory. Um, this is a very similar shot, right? Gray background, but it's real, so there was no need for the cutout. Um, and again, it could be a non-technical uh, comment to say, "Oh, would have been nice." I think, right? I think uh, it could have been um, more uh, interesting or perhaps easier or more natural to have placed your, your subject on a real background, on an authentic background so that you didn't have to cut it out, right? So you don't have to get technical. Um, and I think this is a good example of that. Uh, let's just leave off here with negative space, less Goldschmidt, right? And she wanted to bring this one out because everyone said, I love this take. So creative, very clever, love the humor. Um, I could critique the critiquers here 
um, by uh, calling them out and saying that this it looks like a on camera flash here. It's very dark over here on the left side. Perhaps a straight on angle wasn't the most flattering. I don't think Les was um, catering this image towards uh, a, a Pulitzer nomination. And I think he was going for the humorous. And I think in this case, it really lightened people's day. And that's what they wrote. This is really clever. Put a smile on my face. Um, so I just wanted to leave it off with that, that not all photos have to be uh, technically and compositionally perfect and not all critiques and comments have to be saturated in technical perfection. Uh, I really hope this helps your critiquing in the future, and I hope it helps accepting the critiques as well in the future. Uh, if you'd like me to do more of these crit critiques on the critiquers, I'd be happy to. I think it's a very uh, interesting uh, take on the coffee and critique. And I think it is a very important aspect of uh, our little uh, project here in our community to get the feedback, although it is extra credit um, on our personal challenge that we take on every week to just be creative and get a photo. I do think it's, uh, it's helpful to uh, make sure that this space stays supportive and positive and helpful. So uh, I see he has his watermark here on the <laughs> magazine. That's really cute. All right, guys, uh, that's it for now. I hope to do more of these. If you like these and you want to help support the project, please uh, visit our Patreon page to leave a pledge. Check out that Iceland trip now before it's all sold out. Until next time, happy shooting. Hi, my name is Yosef Adest, and I started 52 Frames back in 2011 as a personal passion project of mine for me and my friends to get better at photography through a guided weekly photo challenge. Little did I realize at just how much this would impact thousands of people from all over the world, literally changing the way they perceive their world. I can't count how many letters of gratitude I've received from people in the project thanking me for all that the project has done for them and for enabling a creative space in their otherwise busy lives. For 2016, I'd like to take this project to the next level. I have spent countless hours and my own money over the last five years in making this project something really special, which is why I'm now coming to you for support. I'd like to invite you to become a patron of 52 Frames. In order to keep this project running, from server costs, the emails I send out, the forms we use, it costs me hundreds of dollars every month. But for this year and beyond, I want to do even more. For those of you that know me, know that video is my passion. And I really want to devote more time to creating fun, educational, dynamic video that will help you, the photographer, become better at your craft. Becoming a patron is very simple. All you need to do is pledge any dollar amount each month and you will have full access to the 52 Frames Patreon page, as well as your personal footing in making this project become something truly special. In addition to that, I have some exciting stretch goals, and that's to hire developers to build a fully functional website, to host our rather large albums off of Facebook, and introduce great functionality like follow, sort, and filter, not to mention the sponsorships and prizes we can give out with a proper budget. 52 Frames is and always will be free to participate. Please help me in continuing to offer this project to creatives around the world. Thank you so much for being a patron. Whether it's a dollar a week, a dollar a month, or just helping to spread out this message, I so much appreciate you helping and fulfilling my vision and spreading joy and creativity to the world.